The art of the appearance is what you might think of as the physical aspect. The word appearance entails um, image. And even though image is so important, and image is a huge part of our culture, hence why beauty pageants have been around for the last 90 years, a big part of my experience as Miss California has been very internal. It's been very introspective. So even though there is a huge emphasis on how we present ourselves physically, most of my work as Miss California has taken place off stage, and what I find most meaningful are the interactions that I have during my day-to-day -day appearances that are not in the public spotlight. So what am I going to talk to you about today that will connect with all of you? I discovered that every single Miss California has one year to do her job. The moment she's crowned, she is thrust into the spotlight, and she essentially represents a scholarship organization. There are the parades, there are the um, typical shaking hands, kissing baby moments, but a lot of it is actually community service and platform work. And the platform that we use um, as the Miss America organization allows us to choose individual platforms, which as the MCs mentioned, mine were STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math. We see lots of contestants who do um, platforms related to health or platforms related to political action, political efficacy. I chose something that um, I think is going to pave the way towards the future by getting more girls into science, technology, engineering, and math. So the best thing about being Miss California is that I have a year to feel like I'm expected to be a role model. I have a year where I'm expected to be a leader and a servant leader. But the dirty little secret is that you don't need to be Miss California and you don't need to be a winner of a pageant in order to be a role model. Every single day that I've done an appearance this year, I've thought to myself, after this year is up, what am I going to do? It's going to be really hard to come down from a year where I've essentially been the center of attention into every room that I walk into. But I'm going to explain to you a couple of moments where it didn't matter that I had a crown on my head. It was a mentality and a philosophy that I brought to my work. It was a philosophy that I can carry far into the future after my year is over. Long after the wrinkles have set in, long after A-line skirts have gone out of style, I will still have that same philosophy of being a role model. And that's what I want to share with all of you. The concept that even though I'm Miss California, what I've learned this year is you don't need to be Miss California and make a difference. Many of my appearances are with children. And the best part of my job is I've been able to connect with kids at an age when they're very impressionable. It was not too long ago that all of us were their age. And uh, the best part also is that I engage with children who I typically wouldn't have the chance to meet. This is Lainey, she's nine years old. She has Angelman syndrome, a severe learning disability. And when I met her, she had no idea who I was. She didn't care that I had a crown on my head and she didn't care what I was wearing or that I had makeup on. All she cared about was that there was a person who was spending some time with her who was smiling at her and giving her good energy. So she, in turn, reciprocated that energy, and I saw her do the same for every person. It wasn't just me, but it was for every person who had a chance to just sit with her and give her their time. When I go to schools, I um, oftentimes um, have a really great message. And my message, in my opinion, I, I think it's great. <laughs> the kids don't always think it's great. Um, sometimes when I go to hospitals, I also have that same message, which is to, you know, Believe in yourself that you will get better, and you will. The Children's Miracle Network Hospital is a philanthropy that the Miss America organization also fundraises on behalf of. So a part of my job is to go to Children's Miracle Network hospitals like this one. Now, children have a very eager, courageous kind of attitude when it comes to the healing process. I think it's because they're young, and they have this optimism. They're incredibly strong, and they inspire me. So having gone to the Children's Miracle Network Hospital and suddenly going to a very different appearance, which is the Veterans Hospital, I've noticed that the human spirit over the course of a lifetime endures a lot. And the people that I meet at the Veterans Hospital are very, um, they're experienced, they've seen a lot, they've done a lot, and it's hard to sometimes reach them. It's hard to get them to smile. It's a lot easier to get children to smile, but at the Veterans Hospital, it's not, it's not always this case. I was doing a three-day tour to veterans hospitals in the Bay Area, and my job is to essentially look nice, come in, sit with them, talk to them, engage them, and thank them for their service to our country. 
I met a man named Jim. Jim was lying in a, in a bed like this. And he was actually, um, I believe, a World War II veteran. After the whole day of going from ward to ward, I kind of lost track of which ward I was in. So we had gone to the polytrauma unit, we'd gone to the rehabilitation unit, and I finally found myself on the third floor of the Menlo Park VA Hospital, and I noticed that all of the rooms were really, really bright. There was just, just a lot of sunlight. So naturally, I'm a Leo. I totally feed off of the sunlight. So when I walked in, I said, hey, Jim. I, I know your name's Jim because there's a sign on the door. I really wasn't stalking you. <laughs> but he said, oh, hi, who are you? And I could tell he was, he was partially blind. So I said, hi, I'm Crystal. I didn't say I was Miss California. Um, but the hospital photographer who was with, with us at the time said that I was Miss California. Jim just nodded his head. He wasn't impressed. He, could, he couldn't see. <laughs> So I sat down with him, and I said, Jim, how are you feeling today? He goes, oh, not bad. The, uh, the nurses are good. I'm happy. The man, a few words. And I was, he said, Crystal, tell me about yourself. So I said, well, I am born and raised in the Bay Area. Um, I represent the Miss California Scholarship Organization. And um, oh, hold on right now. Let's take a picture. Let's take a picture. Um, as I was saying, I want to thank you for your service to our country. Thank you for everything that you've done. He started crying. I did not expect this at all. Grown man, he fought in the Vietnam War, and he was crying. And I asked him if he was okay, and he said, well, Crystal, you're the first person I've, I've had visit me in six months. I don't have any family. I lie in this bed, and I watch Jerry Springer every day. Well, I don't watch it, but I listen to him. And my life is just not that interesting. But you came here today, and you visited me, and I really appreciate that. And in that moment, I realized it didn't matter whether I was Miss California or not. He didn't care what I looked like. It was my intent and the time that I spent to even engage him. Because there are people among us every day. We live in a world of 7 billion people who might not be having a great day. But each of us has an opportunity to make your appearance into their life, into their moment, into a day when they, might, when they might need you most. So aside from visiting veterans' hospitals, I also visit um, schools. And I give autograph cards. When I was little, I was always told to study hard, so I've since internalized that, and I pass that on <laughs> in the form of messages that I write on autograph cards. And even though 300 kids might get the same autograph card, one of them or two of them might actually keep them. And I had a mom email me. She said, I found your email address on the internet. I wanted to let you know little Jimmy was in that second grade class that you talked to last week, and he's kept your autograph card by his bed every night. And I, I want to thank you for writing study hard because it means a lot more coming from you than me. <laughs> so I was like, yes, scored! Like, Tiger Mom and me is already coming out. And little Jimmy, even though I'll probably never see him again, I just hope he remembers study hard, because chances are, if he ever meets me in the future, I won't look like this is the girl in the picture. <laughs> um, one of the best parts about going to schools is, like I said earlier, they're impressionable. And I remember at that time being in third grade. And I looked up to every person who was coming into our school for read aloud day. Um, if a firefighter came in, I wanted to be a firefighter that day. Um, if uh, our school principal came in to read a book, I wanted to be the principal. And the best part about um, this story is that there's a girl named Lila. And in case you're wondering what it looks like from my view, I see lots of eager faces staring back at me. Um, if I had Google Glass, you'd be able to see right now all of your faces looking at me, looking at you, looking at me. It would be like recursion on the TV screen. Recursion is a really geeky computer term. Anyway, going on a tangent. So the actual um, story that I want to tell you is about a girl named Lila. And Lila is nine years old. She was waving her hand at me from the room when I came in. And I spent about 45 minutes with each classroom, and I have a preset presentation all about the science, technology, engineering, and math that I had talked about earlier. This was a class that I visited after lunch. They were all buzzing with energy, and I could tell the, uh, the boys were still sweaty from kickball, and the girls were eagerly waiting to hear what a girl in a crown had to say to them. And Lila raised her hand. She goes, Crystal, Crystal, I, I want to tell you what I want to be when I grow up. I said, okay, this is perfect. 
I turned off the presentation. No one was interested in hearing about STEM. So I said, what do all of you want to be when you grow up? We went around the room. Some kids said, I want to be a firefighter. I want to be a doctor. I want to be an astronaut. Um, and this little girl, she said, I want to be a nurse. So I asked Lila, why do you want to be a nurse? She says, well, my mom's a nurse, and I want to help people. So I said, great. Have you thought about being a doctor? Because doctors are also in health, and they also help people. Have you thought about being a doctor? She says, no, I never really thought about it. But I'm thinking about it now. <laughs> so I thought, this girl's got personality. And she had a very distinctive voice. She's got black pigtails. And when she was walking out of the classroom, I saw that her mom was waiting to pick her up. And I overheard her say, mommy, mommy, I don't want to be a nurse anymore. I want to be a doctor. And so I was like, I think I made a difference. That's pretty cool. And I, I want to, the reason why the story touched me is because I know for a fact that she's not going to remember that, what I look like. She's not going to remember the sound of my voice. But she's going to remember that moment of an epiphany when she said, when she realized that she could be a doctor and that she realized that there is someone in her life willing to nudge her in that direction, just thinking bigger. So all the contestants are often told, always act like you're wearing the invisible crown. I've talked about Jim, someone who really was having a not so great day. I've talked about Lila, who was just a, a little girl who needed a role model. All of us need role models. I remember when I was her age, I looked up to everybody because I thought there was something to learn from everyone. And there's immense value here in this audience because, like I said, all of you make an appearance every day. All of you have an invisible crown. Even the men. All of you have invisible crowns. And the lesson of this story is I've had the best years, Miss California, not because of my physical appearance, not because of the photo shoots or the eyelashes or the clothes. That part is fun. But like I said, trends go in and out of style. Youth will fade. The physical is only temporary. But the meaning that you have in every daily interaction is what people remember. One of my favorite quotes is from Maya Angelou. People will forget what you said. People won't remember what you wore. People won't remember what you look like. But people will always remember how you make them feel. And you don't need a crown to make someone feel like they're the best person they can be. You don't need a crown to impact someone in their day-to-day -day life or impact them in a way where you're a role model for them at a moment when it really defines the trajectory of their future. So with that, I leave you with that message. Each of you has a daily appearance. My platform this year was the Miss California organization, but your platform is your life. My platform is going to be the rest of my life. I give up the title in six weeks. I've learned that with this philosophy, I can carry on in being a role model. I can carry on in being a leader. And success and inspiration comes in many different packages. And it's not temporary. Even though I had one year, I have the rest of my life, and each of you has the rest of your life to make an impact in someone like Jim's life, in someone like Lila's life. And I know each of you is going to enjoy it, because the more you give, the more you receive. Thank you.